Good evening. It's good to be back at our time for Besides Still Waters, our evening devotion. This is Marty Gabler, and I am going to be reading the Word of God and praying with you, praying for you, and we are going to touch the heart of God and be touched by the heart of God. We will be encouraged and we will be uh, lifted up. We will be edified and uh, the Lord will be doing His work in us through His Word and through the ministry of His blessed Holy Spirit. Tonight we're going to be in uh, Psalm 31. left Jesus after a time period. They were disappointed that he wasn't taking the lead in a military sense against the Romans to turn the table on the Romans. So they began to leave Jesus and Jesus said, Peter, will you leave also? And he said, where else can I go? Where else can I go? Jesus, you are the one we need. I pray over my friends tonight as we get into this devotion. As we look into the Word of God, mm, we seek your face tonight, Lord, in this devotion time. We think upon you. We dwell upon you. We put our thoughts uh, of other things aside, and we put our thoughts on, on your Word. We put our thoughts on, on you, your character, uh, your faithfulness. You are the faithful God. Great is thy faithfulness. Your mercies are new every morning. Let, let's just praise him here at the beginning of our devotion. You are faithful, God. Mm. You are never without faithfulness toward your own, toward your children, toward those who call upon your name. Your mercies endure to a thousand generations. Uh, and your mercies are new every morning. Great is thy faithfulness. Great is thy faithfulness. Psalm 31, hide in God. Let's begin with verse 19. I want to go to uh, the... Net Bible, NET, New English Translation, tonight because of I, I like a, a few of the the words that the translators of that Net version use here, and I, they really emphasize what I believe we're supposed to emphasize in our devotion tonight. Psalm 31. How great, verse 19. Verse 20 is our theme verse, but I want to begin with verse 19, Psalm 31, the NET version. How great is your favor, which you store up for your loyal followers. In plain sight of everyone, you bestow it on those who take shelter in you. Father God, we take shelter in you tonight. You are our shelter, our hiding place. We make that commitment to you right here at the beginning of our devotion. Mm. We are hearing the word of God tell us that you are our shelter. Your word says it. Your word labels you thus, and we trust in you thus. Hmm. Our theme is hide in God. Have you ever experienced? Now, 
this language might sound a little unusual to you, but that's the way it came to me today. I've been dealing with some things over the last couple of days, and I'm going to mention it right here. You'll know what I'm talking about because this has happened to you too. Have you ever experienced, and here's a kind of a strange terminology, have you ever experienced a little attack sneaking up on you? Now, you know, it wasn't anything major. It didn't take you out. It didn't put you in the hospital. It didn't even put you in bed. Uh, it didn't uh, completely deplete all of your uh, bank account and, you know, totally destroy all your credit and credit cards or anything like that. But a little attack, an irritation, an aggravation, but it was an attack. Maybe you didn't recognize it as being such at the time, but that's what it was. And then about the time you uh, recover from that, that quote unquote, little attack, then uh, another little attack comes along from a completely different direction coming down a completely different avenue in uh, quite a different form, but it is also one of those little attacks and it does the same thing. It uh, causes uh, a considerable amount of distraction from your day, from your obligations, from your, uh, from your peace of mind. And then about the time you think you've recuperated from that one, or at least you've got a grip on it and can handle it, uh, here comes another one from yet another direction of a different sort. And then you finally, at least I do, I get to a point to where I think, okay, then <laughs> where is the next one coming from? Or when is the next one coming? After a while, I don't know about you, but I get to thinking, this can't be coincidence. I mean, like, I've had three of these little attacks hit me within X number of hours in the course of two days. This can't be coincidence. I think if you and I are thinking that, I think we're thinking correctly. I think that the enemy takes time periods when he just, I don't know if he puts extra emphasis on us or extra hemp's on our case or what the, the situation may exactly be, but uh, I've experienced this numerous times in my life. Here will come an attack and then, you know, I may not sit down and, and meditate on it and pray and think, well, you know, actually that was an attack of, of the enemy against me uh, and then uh, you know when the next one comes along say oh okay yeah I was ready for that it's like I've got two or three of those things hitting me before I even realize whoa I'm under attack and today when I was meditating on this I've been uh, doing some uh, some work outside some physical labor type stuff and uh, you know my mind really gets to digging in deep when I'm I'm working like that and uh, I, I all of a sudden it, it hit me <laughs> bless my little heart I'm under attack uh, I begin to pray begin to pray in the spirit begin to Seek the face of the Lord. What are these attacks about? What is it that the enemy is trying to distract me from? Uh, that, that's what attacks are about. If the enemy can't take you completely out, he wants to derail you or he wants to distract you. Um, wants you to be caught up with things that keep you from focusing on the true uh, mandate that's ahead of you. Especially when these attacks affect us emotionally and affect our sense of value. And they eventually kind of like 
prod us to a point to where we uh, start judging ourselves and start, you know, oh, I didn't act right in that situation. I didn't, I didn't have the right attitude there. Oh, golly, where's my faith? <laughs> um, I, I just finally got to the point to where I, I just started saying, God, I need a place to hide. <laughs> You know, uh, if uh, if a, a soldier is out on a battlefield and and uh, shells start flying in, mortars, you know, and and bullets start whizzing past him and everything, I think it would be wise of that soldier to find a place to hide from all of that stuff zinging in on him. Uh, I think it's wise of you and I to follow Scripture. Uh, Scripture tells us we can hide in God. We've got permission. Let's let's do that. Let's let's hide in God. How great is your favor, Psalm thirty-one nineteen says, which you store up for your loyal followers in plain sight of everyone. You bestow it on those who take shelter in you. We're taking shelter in our God tonight, you and me, my friends. Father God, we take shelter. Let's just. Let's just lift up our voices in prayer. Let's just open that confession out to God and into the atmosphere. I am taking shelter in you tonight, mighty God. Jehovah Sabaoth, the Lord of angel armies, I am taking shelter in you tonight. I'm diving into the foxhole. I'm diving into you to hide in you this night. I need a place to hide. And uh, like Peter said, where else can we go? Where else? Being our rock, our shelter, our cleft, our place to hide. Hmm. Where else can I go? Peter love the way it's uh, it's ministering to me <laughs> it is is ministering to me uh, you hide them with you where they are safe from the attacks of men you conceal them in a shelter where they are safe from slanderous attacks there may be some of you that are under attack from people people at work people in your family people in your community uh, maybe even at your church. Uh, people in uh, places of business where you're trying to get something done, something purchased, something accomplished, trying to get the worth for your dollar, uh, trying to get the guarantee applied where something has failed on a product. Mm. Father, whether we are being slandered by men or whether we are being attacked by slings and, and uh, darts and arrows that fly at us of all sorts that are ripping up our emotions, that are uh, uh, stealing our peace in the middle of the day or in the middle of the night. We find that shelter in you. We come to you for that shelter. Conceal us. Conceal us in your shelter. Psalm 31:20 says you do. The psalmist hid in you and he found you concealing him. We come to hide in you to be concealed in you tonight. Or we're safe. Psalm 27:5 says the hiding talks about the hiding place of his tabernacle. Psalm 61:4 talks about the hiding place of his wings. 
And Psalm 91, 1 talks about the hiding place of His shadow. Hmm. God has made provision for us to hide when we are under attack. We hide in you, O God. We hide in your tabernacle. We hide in your shelter. We hide in your shadow. Mm. We hide under your wings tonight. McLaren in his commentary says, a better wording of that passage is this, thou shalt hide them in the secret of thy face. <laughs> he said, if we go back to the original language, he said, that's the better wording of that passage. Thou shalt hide them in the secret of thy face. In other words, the word presence in that scripture is really the word face. Hmm. Earlier when I was reading this these verses and praying, what I saw was my little baby girl, Melissa, when she was just a tiny thing, little bitty hands, little precious face. I remember her on many an occasion while I was holding her, putting her little hands on my face with her little face right there in my face. And you know, friends, that was all I could see. All I could see was that beautiful little face. And she would pat my face with those little hands. And she would jabber away, just jabber and jabber away, saying something to me. She was but an infant. All she could do was jabber. But she would look right into the, my eyes with those beautiful eyes of hers. And she would pat me on the face with her little face right in my face, just jabbering. Mm. McLaren said, Thou shalt hide them in the secret of thy face. I want to be in God's face tonight. That's where I want to hide. There are those who believe that this was talking about the light of His presence and His glory. Hiding in that light where no evil darkness can pierce through. Hiding, being so close to Father, being so drawn into Him, being pushing in, pressing into Him so. The Bible says, draw nigh to God and He will draw nigh to you. Just getting right in there in His face. Mm. Verse 21 says, The Lord deserves praise. I'm in Psalm 31, verse 21, the NET version tonight. The Lord deserves praise, for He demonstrated His amazing faithfulness to me when I was besieged by enemies. Oh, we look for your faithfulness tonight. You are faithful, God. We started out our devotion tonight proclaiming you, declaring you the faithful God who is always faithful. Great is thy faithfulness. We would see your faithfulness tonight, O God. Verse 22 says, I jumped to conclusions. I love the way he put that there. I jumped to conclusions and said, I am cut off from your presence. <laughs> Could have read a lot of verses tonight without going there, couldn't I? I'm afraid all of us at one time or another have jumped to conclusions and said, wow, God doesn't love me. God doesn't care. God isn't involved in this. God doesn't see this. God doesn't know this. He doesn't know what's going on with me. He, or he's withdrawn his presence from me.
place of being in your face that darkness cannot pierce through to. And we cry out, help and have mercy. Verse 23 says, Love the Lord, all you faithful followers of His. The Lord protects those who have integrity, but He pays back in full the one who acts arrogantly. We love you, Lord. You are faithful. We love you for who you are, and we love your faithfulness. And then finally, in verse 24, of Psalm 31, the psalmist says, Be strong and confident, all you who wait, all you who wait on the Lord. Be strong tonight, my friend. Be confident, all you who wait on the Lord. Be strong and confident because you are in the shelter of His face in the light of his countenance where no darkness can pierce through be strong and confident thank you father for the confidence we have which is a holy confidence in you and who you are it is a confidence that is not let down we hope in you we trust in you we cry out to you we make our plea to you we hide in you we are hidden in the cleft of the rock. We are hidden in Him who cannot be moved. Hallelujah. We make our plea to you tonight. You alone are our shelter and our refuge. You're in Him tonight, my friend. He's your shelter and He's your refuge. And He cannot be shaken or moved. And in Him, you will not be shaken or moved. God bless you, love you, praying for you. God is for you, not against you. And He is with you all this night. You are sheltered in Him. As you lie down to rest tonight, dream dreams of victory. Dream dreams of expectancy in the Lord. And the Lord guide every step. And may the Lord give His angels charge over you to lift up your foot, lest you dash it against the stone. Love you, praying for you. Good night. Blessings.